morning and it's filled to the brim and it is St. Patrick's Day. It is Tuesday, March 17th and it's actually Wednesday, not Tuesday. <laughs> um, you know, I want to say just something about St. Patrick. He's an example of someone that reached other people because of compassion. And today we're going to talk about how Jesus' touch brought life and how he exemplified that to his followers. And he left us his Holy Spirit so that our touch brings life. And that's what we want to talk about in regards to training our senses. Because we were talking about the power of agreement and that our senses are trained, as Hebrews 5.14 says, but solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. You know, in Scripture... Our touch, the original touch by humanity, Eve and Adam, brought death. But his touch brings life. You know, Genesis 3, 3 says, God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And what did they do? They reached out and they touched and it brought death. But Jesus came and his touch brought life. And I talked about that, how he has delivered us, brought us into salvation by his own hand, brought us through the Red Sea, brought us through the blood so that we can walk in freedom and deliverance and power and authority as a result. So Jesus' touch brings life and healing. John 10.10, 10, the, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. He came to bring us life and he gave life through his touch. Many times in scripture, example after example, Jesus gives life through his touch. Now it's interesting because as I'm reading scripture and I'm thinking about the Lord and communing with the Lord... There's some revelation that I received that, you know, one thing about touch, you got to be close to touch. There has to be a, a proximity that brings closeness. And in order for people to receive touch in a positive way, they have to feel safe. So the fact is, is that Jesus was a very safe person to the vulnerable. Because many of those who followed him, the crowds that went after Jesus, were sick. They had need. They were vulnerable. They had been abused by the doctors of the day. They had no answers. They were vulnerable. And Jesus was not about making a name for himself. He was not about becoming popular. He was not trying to prove anything. And actually, he was moved with compassion. See, because the truth is this, Jesus had nothing to prove. And Jesus was not in competition with the enemy. Actually, Jesus said, I have nothing in common with the enemy. John 14, 30 says, this is what he says, I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. Other versions say, he has no power over me. He has no claim over me. He has nothing in me. No power over me, nor anything that he can use against me. He has nothing to use against me. He has nothing in me that belongs to him. Isn't that the way we should be internally? With the freedom and life and purity that the Holy Spirit brings to us through salvation, that the enemy has no claim over us. In Jesus' uh, persona and who he was, he had credibility because there was no claim the enemy had over him. His motives were pure in touching people. He was safe. He was a safe person. How important it is to be safe for people. He never used his touch with a motive other than love and compassion. Jesus had credibility with the crowds because he was a safe person. And Jesus is our model and we need to be safe people so that when we reach out and touch people, they're feeling safe. You know, I, I express a concern here sometimes because I've seen even in the charismatic community of people, you know, wanting to build a name of, I, you know, I pray for people, I heal, they get healed. They're trying to build a name, maybe trying to have a platform for ministry and, you know, maybe being asked to come to do ministry or whatever. And that actually is not rooted in the right motives. 
the vessel, the instrument doesn't need to have credit for the Holy Spirit's power to move through them. It's so important that our motives are like Jesus. Because Jesus had the aroma of the Father's presence. He had the aroma of Abba. He had the aroma of unconditional love. You know, Matthew 9, 35 through 37 shows and tells us about the compassion of Jesus when he is healing people. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Now look at the progression of this paragraph. He's healing people. He's healing their diseases and sickness. Every disease and sickness. He's moved with compassion. And then he speaks to his disciples. So he's revealing disciples being used by me. The motive has to be being moved with compassion. Being touched by compassion. You know, what is compassion? It's recognizing the sufferings of others and taking action to help them. We are to be moved by compassion, not by a name for ourselves. Sometimes we have to, well, many times we have to be aware of our motives. Our motives with people. Jesus brought life to people around him and they felt safe. The crowds felt safe. They sought him out. The sick felt safe. The women felt safe. They sought him out and they even reached out to touch him because they felt safe. Because the love exuded from him. The compassion exuded from him. Because his motive was never to make a name for himself. His motive, he never came to prove a thing. Because Jesus knew who he was. He came to love. When Jesus reached out and touched people, they welcomed it because he loved them. And they knew he loved them. And when we reach out and touch people, may the people who are on the other end of that touch know and feel and sense the love of God in us, that we're not trying to prove anything. We're not trying to make a name for ourselves. We don't have spiritual pride in us or arrogance, but rather we're simply moved with compassion like Jesus. This is the challenge for us today. Let's check our hearts. In a world that is trying to have a lot of celebrityism, Christian celebrityism, let us beware of the motives. He wants us to touch people. Oh, for sure. But he wants them to feel safe and us express him, as he told his disciples, being moved with compassion. God bless you. Pray about this word.